Coming off one of the worst pay-per-views we've ever seen at UFC 301, we're treated to a great one here in New Jersey. UFC 302 features a lightweight title fight between the pound-for-pound -pound king Islam Makhachev and perennial title contender Dustin the Diamond Poirier. As well as that, we also got all-action middleweight Sean Strickland and Paulo Costa facing off, the unfiltered Kevin Holland going against Mikhail Olegchechuk, and heavyweight prospect Jalton Almeida trying to make his way through the rankings against Alexander Romanov. This coming weekend is going to be a treat in Newark. So here in this video, I'll break down each fighter I mentioned on the main card and predict which of them come out on top. The first fight I want to break down in this video is Jalton Almeida against Alexander Romanov. Almeida is a highly touted heavyweight prospect that the UFC have tried to push into title contention. So Jalton Almeida seems as though his ceiling is limitless. Yeah. Because he can do that to just about anyone. Th this guy looks like he's going to be a star in the heavyweight division. Yeah. He's had key wins against Derek Lewis and Jarzinho Rosenstrike, but failed in his last fight against Curtis Blades. Almeida is a grappling heavy fighter, having 4 of his 7 wins in the UFC by submission. His striking is questionable, but that doesn't matter when you have the ability to take a person down at will. In his last fight against a heavyweight who can actually wrestle, Almeida was manhandling Blades in the first round, just taking him down anytime he pleases. But his IQ lost in the fight not wanting to let go of a single leg before being knocked out by hammer fists. He's also very light for the division, only weighing 240 pounds in a division that maxes out at 265. He's shown that it doesn't matter how much you weigh though, dominating opponents almost 30 pounds heavier. But he's going against the 13th ranked heavyweight Alexander Romanov. Romanov is a very strong heavyweight with an emphasis towards grappling in his fighting style. He was 16-0 and 0 at one point in the UFC. But ever since facing ranked competition, he hasn't been able to make that extra step, losing to Marcin Taibora and Alexander Volkov. Now he's in the middle of the pack, but he's looking to make a statement this coming weekend. For how this fight plays out, I think Almeida absolutely dominates Rovanov, smothering him with takedowns from the bell and winning this fight by submission. The next fight I'll talk about is the no-filter Kevin Holland against Mikhail Olegchechuk. Every MMA fan loves Kevin Holland. He comes to fight doesn't want to wrestle, and puts on a show for the fans every single time. Going back up to middleweight after fighting at 170 in his last 5 fights, he's looking to get back into the win column, losing his last 2 against Michael Venom Page and Jack Della Maddalena. His fight strategy? All striking. Punches, kicks, elbows, you name it he got it. His wrestling isn't bad either, but don't expect that to happen. Now let's talk about his opponent. Mikhail Olegchechuk is a powerful middleweight who loves to keep the fight standing. The southpaw has otherworldly power in his hands, having his last 4 wins being by way of knockout. What Mikhail doesn't do so well is his ability to work on the ground. In his last 3 losses, his opponents have made it a priority to take him to the ground, knowing they'd win the fight that way. How this fight plays out? We're here to see a striking battle from two exciting fighters. I think Kevin Holland uses his 7 inch reach advantage to the best of his ability and wins this fight by decision. Now we come to the two main fights of this card, starting with the former middleweight champ Sean Strickland going against the former title challenger Paulo Costa. We can talk about how this fight doesn't make any sense, since Strickland is the former champ and Costa just lost against Whitaker. But the UFC wants to create fireworks this weekend, and fireworks it shall be. Sean Strickland has this philosophy that has made him loved by fans all over the world. Fight this guy like a man. That means no grappling, no moving backwards, and not having a care in the world. Strickland has a strictly boxing style, even though he has a black belt in jiu-jitsu. The former champ uses his Philly shell style and jab to land good shots on his opponents while not getting hit. His defense is the best part of his style, having a 63% strike defense. But he's going against the questionable Paulo Costa. Costa has just returned after a 2 year absence to fight Robert Whittaker, the number 3 ranked middleweight in the UFC. It was an all out war with both fighters having their ways with each other, but Whitaker came out on top. So what does the UFC do? They give Whitaker Hamzat Chamaya, the 10th ranked middleweight, and they give Costa Sean Strickland, the number 1 ranked middleweight in the UFC. It makes no sense, but I'm here for it. Costa is primarily a striker, pushing the action the whole fight. Just like his opponent, Costa is also a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, but decides to throw it out the window when he fights. How the fight plays out? I think Strickland's defense is going to be frustrating for Costa, who's going to look for the knockout as soon as the fight starts. I got Strickland by decision. Lastly, we come to the main event of the evening, 
which is the best fighter in the world, Islam Makhachev, going against Dustin Poirier. Islam Makhachev is the protege of arguably the greatest fighter of all time, Khabib Nurmagomedov. They've had this planned out since they started training together. Always, he told, after Khabib when retired, Islam have to take this belt. Khabib wins the title first, he retires, and Islam takes over after that. Islam has had the exact same dominance as Khabib, finishing anyone who comes into his path. He won the lightweight title against Charles Oliveira and defended it twice against former pound-for-pound -pound king Alexander Volkanovsky. Although he learned under Khabib who is notorious for having the best wrestling in the game, Islam has very good striking and uses it a lot. He likes to fight off the back foot against his opponents, giving them a lot to think about since he can knock them out on the feet or take them down and make the whole fight help. But he's going against the guy who's seen it all in the octagon up to this point. Dustin the Diamond Poirier has consistently been one of the best fighters in the world. He has the best boxing in the UFC in my opinion, being so strong and accurate with his punches. But where he struggles a lot is with his grappling, not being able to win fights against top level grapplers. We've seen this in his previous two title fights against Khabib and Charles Oliveira, losing both fights by submission. But the guillotine master himself has learned from those mistakes and is hoping this is the fight where he finally wins the undisputed lightweight title. For how this plays out, I think Islam is the pound for pound king for a reason. He's going to use his striking for a couple minutes in the beginning of the rounds, then maul him with grappling the rest of the fight. I got Islam by submission. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.